Good morning. My name is Mike Swaremski. I'm a member of the Charles Schwab Futures Team. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today on a special edition of Spotlight on Futures here. We're going to do a kind of a transition here for our Street Smart Central clients and kind of demonstrate all the tools and features they use on Street Smart Central there and how they can apply that here on the Thinkorswim desktop platform. And uh, today I can think of nobody better than to do our demonstration today, but uh, education coach and avid futures trader, uh, James, sorry here, <laughs> James Boyd here. Sorry, it's early morning here. I need a little bit of coffee here today here. James, uh, good morning to you and uh, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, great to be with you here, Mike. Looking forward to actually uh, talking about some futures and also how to use the Thinkorswim platform with futures. Absolutely right there. And before we begin, though, we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to discuss today, but let's go through some important information first here. First, we want to note that any information provided for general information purposes only and not be considered individualized recommendations or personalized investment advice. Any of expressions of opinion, James or I make are subject to change without notice and reacting to shifting market conditions. We'll also be looking at the charts today. So we do want to note that Schwab does not recommend use of technical analysis as a sole means of investment research. And we'll obviously we'll be discussing the futures market today. We do want to note that futures trading does involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for all investors. So if you're interested in trading futures with us, we ask that you please read the risk disclosure statement for futures and options. And kind of going over what we're gonna talk about today here, we're gonna discuss, for instance, the difference in symbology between Street Smart Central here and Thinkorswim. We're gonna show you how to set up a watch list, a little bit of order entry there. We're gonna look at the charts here because futures traders definitely love charts as well too. Talk a little bit about futures and options and just some of the, the tools and features there so you get kind of get a nice transition here from the same things you do on Street Smart Central here and how you can apply it here to Thinkorswim desktop there. So we're also gonna be recording this presentation as well too. So if you wanna watch it at your leisure there in the future there, it'll be up uh, in the next uh, several hours till maybe tomorrow as well too. So we'll definitely have that available as well too. So without further ado, I wanna turn this over to James Boyd here and he'll start today's presentation. All right. So um, first of all, I wanna just tell you, we're excited that you're here and uh, that we could also explain to you how to use the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, I know that when you try any new platform, it's new. Uh, I, I remember the first time I used this platform myself, and I was like, wow, there's uh, so much you could do on this. I was not aware uh, uh, that you could do this, and it took me a little bit to figure it out. But uh, today, our goal is to go over some set materials and to really help you become comfortable with it in practicing. Now, what you're going to notice is I'm on the Thinkorswim platform by TD Ameritrade, excuse me, by, by used to be TD Ameritrade, now Charles Schwab. And what you're now going to notice is we, we are in the paper money platform. Okay, that's why it says PM. Now, what we want to do is I want you to note at the very top, you're going to see monitor, trade, okay, analyze, scan, market watch. Think of market watch like a watch list, okay, charts. These are gonna be some of the tabs we really look at. If we said, what are three tabs that we're really gonna be on quite a bit? It's monitor, where we monitor our orders and our positions. That's not too bad, monitor. It's like watching over something, right? Trade, where we actually gonna go in and do the trades. When we talk about market watch, this is where we're gonna have a watch list, okay? And then fourth, we're gonna go look at the charts. Those four tabs, monitor, trade, market watch, charts those are the four tabs that you're going to be using quite a bit okay now first thing we want to do is we are now going to go to the trade tab okay once we go to the trade tab you're going to see where it'll say all products and there it is you're going to see where it says futures trader okay we're right now just going to click on where it says trade and if i click on where it says trade what you're now going to notice is right below where it says trade it says forward slash ES. Well, you know what this is, right? Now we're talking about the S&P 500, okay? Now, quick heads up here when you take a look at this, as we type in, or you can, um, I had it brought up, but if, if we type it in, literally, it's gonna show forward slash ES, okay? There it is. Now, what you're gonna notice is it's gonna bring up the which contract? It's the March 24. And what you're now gonna notice is this is the active only. Well, wonder if you wanna look farther out, et cetera. Well, if we click on this little drop down, you're gonna see if you said, I wanna see all of them, 
okay? All the contracts. Well, now you're going to see where it says three month, all. And if we go down to all, there it opens up. So you don't have to trade the March. You would just need to actually, uh, go ahead and hit the drop down, go all. And there you, there you actually see the other ones. And it says which one is the active contract that is normally pulling up if you just type in four slash ES. So that's an important to understand because not everyone's maybe going to trade the active contract. Now, the biggest thing is, let's say the investor says, look, I want to start to create uh, a watch list. We will show you how to do that in just a moment. What you're now going to see is if I hit the drop down, okay, are you with me? Hit the drop down. What you're now going to notice is it will say all recent positions futures. Now, this page is very important because you might be wondering, are there certain futures? And if I do certain futures, what is the margin requirement for those or the buying power? Well, if we click on where it says futures, what you're now going to notice is all I did is I clicked the drop down. I then went to futures. Okay. And now we get the list of the different futures, what the product is, the tick size, the tick value and what the initial margin is. So you can see it all right here, okay? Now, what you're gonna notice is, and that's, and by the way, we could scroll up and if I do that, there's 10Y, the, the micro 10 year, uh, 10 year yield futures, Australian dollar, okay? And we scroll down, there's Bitcoin, okay? Uh, on there as well. And you're gonna see that uh, right there, and you're gonna scroll down, there's, uh, Brent, Brent crude, light sweet crude. I mean, lots of options here. Feeder cattle, live cattle, uh, different currencies. There's uh, even the micro, which many of you are aware of. I mean, and this is really important, okay? A lot of people might just be learning about futures and they might say, uh, geez, how do I get started? Micros are a great way to learn about the futures, but that it just, it just doesn't have the same, uh, tick value, okay? And the contract, the, the initial margin is a lot less. So make sure you're aware of that as well, that it doesn't have to be a standard contract. It could even be trading the micros, which is a fraction of a standard contract. Now, let's also say for example, so that's, you're probably thinking, geez, that's nice in a table format. I can see it all right here. Exactly. Now, let's also kind of show something. Mike, if we wanted to do a sample trade, just like how do I buy something? Uh, right. Mike, how do we how do we do that? How do I say I want to go long or buy the S&P 500? Well, the one thing you could do there as well, too, is uh, go to there's a different bunch of order entry pages here on a think or swim. And I think you want to show maybe the basic one to start here, James, then we can maybe show the uh, the ladder there as well, too. And I also want to call out when you're talking about those micros as well, too, that You'll find on the Thinkorswim platform, they have a much larger uh, product base of those micro contracts than we currently do here in SSC as well, too. So you'll see products that you can't currently trade here on SSC, such as the micro crude, uh, the, the uh, well, natural gas there, and some of the uh, metals as well, too. So it's actually an expanded product list as well, too, available there on a Thinkorswim. Yeah. So let's do that, Mike. Uh, what you're going to see is I just kind of scroll down here when four slash M E S, and I'm going to pick that product. Okay, so there it is, loads up. And so here's the thing. Here's the funny thing. Okay, when I first saw this, I was like, well, how do you buy something? And the guy told me, he goes, well, what you want to do is you just want to click on the ask. Okay, and we overthink it. All we have to do is click on the ask. If we click on the ask, it's going to bring up a buy ticket. If I click right on this ass right here, just click on the ass, you're now going to see that it creates a buy ticket down below. Where is it? You're now going to see that it will say future buy plus one contract. If we want more contracts, go up. If we just want one contract, there it is. And now what you're going to notice is we can just read along the line. That's the symbol. H is the month, 24 is the year. There it is, the March. And then there's the price. Now, obviously, as traders, you know about limit orders and market orders and things like that. But let's say that's the price. Now, here's what's nice. If we go in here and say confirm and send and we buy this in the paper trade account doing a sample trade, if I go confirm and send, we can see what is the commission for it, how much money needs to be set inside initially to be in the position, 
And then what we're going to do is let's send it. Let's practice together. Okay. Now, if we do that, what you're now going to notice is we see that it fills. Okay. And what you're now going to see, if we go back to the uh, down below, let me maximize this page. You're now going to see that at the very bottom, it's going to show the position. Okay. We can also see that if we go back to the monitor, where we monitor our orders and our positions. We click on monitor. We can see that when we look down at filled orders, oh, filled orders. Now, this would be for stocks. Uh, it would be for anything. And you're going to see that that filled orders right there. And you're going to see that if we go down here, you're going to see that the MES is right there. So my gosh, you're thinking, that's not that bad. If I want to do a trade, go to the trade tab. If I want to buy something, click on the ask price. And then from there, if, if the position fills, go back to the monitor where you can monitor if the order filled and you can monitor the position. Really not that bad. Okay. Now, Mike, let's say we wanted to actually do like a watch list. Where do we where where can we put the watch list? Well, we could actually put that there on the usually it's on the left hand side there on the uh, Thinkorswim platform there. And James, maybe you could yeah. show them how they want to set up a watch list here, and uh, maybe a quick and easy way to uh, you know find uh, to enter the symbols there, and how we could actually move the symbols there to some of the other parts of the platform. Yeah. So. So let's kind of start with, uh, I like, to, let's start with the bigger page where we go market watch and then quotes. Okay, so market watch quotes. And if I click on market watch quotes, now you're going to get like a page that comes up. Now this page, what you're going to notice is, and if you want to get, get rid of this left side here, what we can do is we can click on that, that arrow and then it's just going to maximize this page. Now, what you're going to see is we have a list that I have right here. And if we just go over to the right, follow my arrow, you're gonna see three lines. Once we click on the three lines, you're gonna see you're gonna uh, see where it says create watch list. Let's click on that. Now, if we create watch list, okay, so we clicked on the three lines, create watch list, there it goes. We're gonna call this futures, okay, uh, watch list. Now, what we're now gonna do is just kind of for a starter, what are some now by the way i'd be interested what are the, some of the symbols you like to look at type oh, them in. well now here's i mean yeah type those into <laughs> yeah. the questions there we'll get those symbols up on the yeah. watch list here now we just talked about mes now mike i mean not to put you on the spot but what are some of the ones you like to look at in, in practice what, what are some of the ones you like to look at oh well i used to be a grain trader back in the day there as well too so i look at products like corn soybeans okay all right so there's zc zebra corn there's there it is and then zs would be like soybeans right correct w would be wheat right so we're correct. just typing them in and then let's say you throw in there oops crude oil cl if you looked at that if you want and then last one just example given let's say we did maybe something like forward slash gc that would be for gold now if you said well where did you get those well remember we could go back to the trade tab click on the drop down arrow go to futures and it's gonna give us those listings there. Now, what I'm gonna do is let's kind of use this as a sample here. We're now gonna go ahead and just click on save. And there's our futures watch list, okay? Now, where could you put the list? I mean, I'm imagining you're gonna, you're gonna be doing some trading and you're right. not gonna to wanna to be on this. You're gonna to wanna to be on a, see on the list on the left-hand side and the chart on the right-hand side. Well, that's where Mike was really talking about. We can now open this back up. See this right here? Let's open that left sidebar back up. See this right here, there's a drop down. Let's click on the drop down. We wanna go to our personal watch list. We click on the we click on the drop down right there. Show that again. Just click on the drop down where it says watch list. Uh, by the way, if you do not have a watch list there, you click on this, you can do what's called switch gadget. And if you switch gadget, what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to say, look, I want to bring up a watch list on the left hand side. Let's show that again. Click on the dr three lines, switch gadget. I want there to be a watch list there. OK, so that's just in case you didn't have a watch list. Now hit the drop down. We're going to go to personal. Guess what? We're going to pull up our personal watch list. We just made where it says futures watch list. OK. Now, what I'm about to show you is very important because I'm imagining that uh, when you click on something, you would like it to be in sync 
Uh, what you're now going to see is on the left hand side, you're going to see this where it will say futures watch list and there will be a chain there. Now, what this really does, you can link the watch list to the trade tab. You can link the watch list to the charts. Let me show you how we do this. So where you see that chain, we're going to click on the chain, go to number one. Okay. Now, when we do that, we're also going to go to the trade tab, go back to the trade tab. And you're going to see there's that chain there as well. Well, we're going to sync them. We're going to click on the chain and go to number one. So what this is going to do is anything that we click on the left-hand side, if I click on gold over here, it loads in the trade tab gold. Now, let's move our way to the charts now. If we go to the charts tab, if I click on that charts, you're now going to notice is we see the chart come up. Now. On the chart itself, you're gonna see that there's the chain. We're gonna click on the chain, go to one. And now what you're gonna see in this case is we're gonna click on that number one. And so if I click go over here and say, oh look, I wanna see, see soybeans, click on soybeans, it just pulls up soybeans. If I click on crude oil, it pulls up crude oil. So you do not have to type the symbols in all the time. Make the watch list change the watch list to let's say number one where you click on the chain go to one and then now when you go to the trade tab guess what's going to be loaded it's going to be crude oil go to the trade tab and you're now going to see that when we pull up the uh trade tab cl is right there so those are some little wins right there set up a watch list now by the way this is a takeaway assignment okay set up a watch list that you want to look at number two sync them click on the click on the link right there just change it to number one. Now you might be wondering, well, what are the other ones for? You can just pick whatever number you want with color, et cetera. Some people might have multiple screens and that's why there's more numbers, okay? Now, the biggest thing is also um, that I will also wanna go over is we talked about how to actually set up a sample trade on the trade tabs. But Mike, where you, you, you mentioned there was maybe another place we could uh, do a futures trade. Where is it? Uh, let's take a look there at the active trader tab okay. there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the trade tab and I'm going to go to where it says active trader. Okay, now if I click on active trader right there, Mike, walk us through. What do you see? Uh, what you see is a chart there on the kind of center there, not to the left there, but on the right is a kind of a tool here that is currently not available on Street Smart, but is something that I think people really love on the thinkorswim platform and that is our our ladder there and uh, maybe james could show you there how to place a trade on the ladder there and what you're seeing there is the price of the market there in the center in gray there and you're also seeing the bid and ask and you're seeing a depth of market there so you're seeing the amount of contracts available at different levels in the market as well too so you could kind of gauge the depth of liquidity there at any given price there i think it goes out 10 deep there from the current price yeah, great point, Mike. And if you take a look at this, you got price, right? And all I'm doing with my mouse is I'm just scrolling up, okay, and it's changing the price. And then as we go up in price, you're going to see the depth of the market in contracts. If we scroll down, what you're going to notice is uh, as I go the opposite direction, there it is. And it, that depth of market really drops off when you start to go lower. Now, right. if you take a look at this, how would you maybe just say, look, if you said, look, I want to get in where I see some liquidity here at, let's say, 48.10. Well, what you're going to notice is I can just click on that uh, line right there, click. And now what you're going to see, just in one click, it brings up an order ticket. And what you're now going to see, if we wanted to do something like that, all we'd have to do is say, send the order. I want you to note the commission. The commission per contract is 225. Notice the buying power is bigger than the first example that we did, the MES, the micro version of the S&P, because this is your standard ES contract. What we're gonna go ahead and do is send that order. And what you're now gonna see is there's a limit order to buy the ES at 48.10. How come it hasn't filled yet? Because the price, as we see right there, is not at 48.10 or lower. Ah, there it is. So once the order fills, we can see that right there. The other place you can notice it is there's a section that says messages right there. And if we click on where it says messages, you're gonna see that this is kind of like a text, if you will, of which orders filled. 
Okay. Now, normally you're just going to see that it pops up like it does. But if you said, well, what order, what trades filled this morning by going to messages, you'll see the running history of what happened already. Now, Mike, this is a great point you brought up this. We went to trade and an active trader. Another place that a lot of investors like to do is can you just buy and sell off the charts? <laughs> yes. Sure and if can. we go to the charts, what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to bring up the MCL. Now, you might kind of be wondering as a futures trader, James, what time frame is this chart? Well, this is really a one year daily chart. So every candle on this chart represents one day of trading. So I want to give you a quick heads up. If you said, well, I, I was kind of thinking about doing a different time frame, you can. Click on where it says D, time frame setup, click on D. And you can now say, look, I was kind of thinking about doing a five day, 15 minutes. So every candle would be 15 minutes. Let's just show this just briefly, so what it looks like. And if we go five day, 15 minutes, we can now see that it's zoomed in on the chart over the last five days. Every candle is five minutes. If we left click on the chart and just drag, it just zooms in. That's all it's doing. Okay. And now we can see that right there. What are the price levels, et cetera, right on the chart? Well, what if I want to go back to that daily chart? Well, click on the time frame again. We're just going to go back to the default for us one year, one D. Okay. And it goes back. Now, what you're now going to see is if we zoomed in, okay, <clears throat> pull something up just real quick. I want to get as much real estate as I can on that bottom. There we go. Now, the one other thing I want to kind of show is if I zoom in, you're going to see that there's a plus arrow down at the bottom and a minus arrow. It's what you'd expect. This is another way you could zoom in or zoom out on the chart. Okay, there you go. Now, what you're now gonna see is off to the right-hand side, it will say trade, okay? The TS on the right is time and sales. As Mike brought up before, active trader, okay? What you're now gonna notice is it will say trade. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the trade, okay, right there. And if I click on trade, what you're gonna notice is it's gonna bring up a buy button and a sell button. Now, this is exactly what it is. If we wanted to, let's say, buy it itself, you're now gonna notice it was, it's where it will also say buy market or sell market. If I click on just the button itself where it says buy market, what you're now gonna see is it's just gonna bring up a buy order, okay? Now, what you're now gonna notice is, so that's the way you could do it. There's also some buttons here that it will call reverse the order. Now, Mike, some th this is kind of like one where you wish there was a glass case over it you don't touch right. it unless you're for sure <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you've ever had that experience remember this is this is kind of like saying let's imagine you had a bullish order and yep. then you are a bullish position and you decided that you were going to go the opposite direction so if you had one contract by clicking the reverse button you would then have a short position okay where it says flatten if you had a position, what it's really doing in that case is when you have a contract, flatten just means exit the position that you have, okay? So that's what that button is really looking at. Now, the other thing is, so kind of, now by the way, if we said sell market, it's just gonna go out and sell it at the market, get out as soon as you can. And the way we got that, what you're gonna notice is we just click on the trade over to the right, and it created those buttons. And a lot of people like that, just a one button format. That's it, okay? Now you're gonna also notice that the T the T and S, the time and sales, if you wanna see when those orders were filled at what price, as Mike showed us before, over here to the right, active trader. Now the key is about any of these buttons is you click the button to bring it up. And then if you do not want it there anymore, click the button to get it off. So if I click on Active Trader again, what well, you're now going to notice is it just goes off. So that's really not that bad. Now, uh, so some functionality there with the charts. The one thing I want to kind of show is, but wonder if you wanted to maybe example do like an entry with a target 
and a stop. I'm imagining as future trader, you'd probably do that quite a bit. Right. But what you can do is you can just buy and sell right off the chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the chart, right click on the chart. We're now going to go down to where it says buy custom. And what we're now going to do in this case is now let me just repeat what I said. Go to the chart where you want to get in, right click on it. We're now going to go down to where it says buy custom and we're going to do a bracket order. Now, you know what this is. You know where we're going, okay? We're going to do a bracket order. And what you're now going to notice is it brings up future buy plus one. Now, you might be thinking, well, I was thinking about going bearish. Well, if you wanted to go bearish, you could just go minus one, and it would create a selling order. That's all we had to do for that. But if you said, I'm going to do a buying order, go back to buying one contract. There it is, 73.20. If you said, well, this first cell that's in red, that's the cell, the February 24, I'm going to type in the price of where the investor thinks it could go to. So if we thought, hey, I think the price could go to 76.20, we'll type it in. And now what we could see is we could go day to GTC or good to cancel. Okay. So the first line there represents uh, the upside target. The second red line re really represents the stop to the downside. So if I said, hey, I'm going to set a stop at 70.20, okay? So if the entry price was 73.20, the stop is 70.20 dated GTC. Now, it, so this is a pretty standard order. You've probably done this before. We're just using the same thing in futures, okay? Now, if I said, let's go confirm and send this, you're now going to see the green line, which is the buy order. The red line, one of them, is the upside target. And the downside is the stop. Okay. Now, there's not going to be two commissions to sell because it's going to sell at one of them. We just don't know which one. And now what we're going to do is send the order. Now, here's what's nice about this. Notice the buy order fills immediately. Okay. And you're now going to see that right on the chart itself, we see that there's a limit order and there's a stop order. Now, I'm going to try to control myself here, okay? One thing that I love about this is you if you said, you know what, OPEC just cut supply, uh, crude oil is shooting to the upside, I want to raise my target. Well, you don't have to go to the trade tab, monitor tab, or anything. Do not click on the X. It will cancel your order. But just to the left of this, where you, you start to get that little finger there, you can left click and hold and drag up. And if you said, you know what, I want to move that price target to 80 bucks. Now, by the way, you could do this on an intraday chart as well. And if you left click and drag it up, do not click on the X. You left click, drag up, it moves it up and let go. And it's now saying, okay, do you want us to now move this to now 8004? Yes, move it to 8004. Okay. Now, if you said, well, I want to move up my stop, I'm imagining as you're in positions, you might want to manage that trend. Maybe we could do the same thing. We could take the stop. Okay. Left click down there. Do not click on the X, drag it up. And if you say, I want to move my stop to 70, let's say 71, 79, let go. Okay. Pops up the window, send. So if you want to move your targets, move the stops, you do not have to go anywhere. You do it right on the chart. It doesn't get any easier than that. My Absolutely thoughts. right, James. I think that's a great feature there to really highlight as well, too, how easy it is to trade off the charts here on Thinkorswim there. Like I said, just one you know, mouse click, confirm, and you, you've done it without even going back to your ticket. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's really, um, you know, some – now, Mike, I'm not sure if you're able to see any of the questions out there. But this might be a good time to maybe kind of look look and see if we can for five minutes or so, maybe kind of talk about some of the questions that are out there. You might be kind of wondering about future specifically for yourself. Uh, now, let's do something before we maybe look at some of those questions. What we're going to do is, let me ask you, I'm going to give you a little quiz. If I wanted to go back and I wanted to see the orders of futures that filled this morning, where would we find them? Well, Oh, we, we saw that there's yeah, yeah. messages, right? Messages is right there. Okay, mm -hmm. So if I click on messages, this is just really a, a, a history of what happened this morning. 
okay? And I can scroll back, okay? The other thing is we can just go to the monitor tab. The monitors, the orders that were filled or working, and it monitors our positions. So just go to that tab. Now, if we do that, if we go to monitor, you're gonna see that there's working orders, filled orders, canceled orders. And if we said, well, which one's filled today? Click on filled orders. And we could see that crude oil filled, ES filled, and the micro ES filled. Now, you're now gonna see that down below, it's gonna show there's the ES contract, crude oil, MES, and it's gonna really show us the profit loss on those positions. Now, these were done as examples. We wanna really show the functionality of what do they look like. Now, I'm also gonna kinda play the example is if you wanted to say, you know what, James, I want to get out of this ES position. Uh, how do I do that? Well, when in doubt, just right click. Well, if you click on this, if you click on that, you're going to see that there's the plus one contract with 64 days. It will show us what was the trade price. The trade price was what did you buy it for? The mark value is where it is now. All right. So let's say I've changed my mind. I don't want to be in anymore, okay? Well, if I change my mind and I say I want to get out, just simply right-click on the line, create a closing order, and click on where it says sell. Now, so that wasn't too bad. Right-click on it, create closing order, sell. Now, when we do a trade, it's going to now take us to the trade tab. And if I click on that line right there, you're now going to see that it takes us to the trade tab. And you might be thinking, I've seen this uh, view before. Exactly. Future sell minus one. Now, if you said, look, I want to get out. Well, what you need to understand is you could just type in that price limit, okay, day, and say confirm and send. Now, the other thing that we could do is wonder if you just said, James, I was not looking on selling, but I was just kind of thinking about setting a stop on it, okay? Well, let's do that again. Right-click, create a closing order, and now you're going to see where it will say with stop and then with, with OCO bracket. This is the idea of I just want to put a stop on it or the bracket. OCO stands for one cancels other. This is that upside target and the downside target, right, the stop, okay, if we're doing bullish. And if I just said, no, I just was setting a stop on it. Okay, fine. Now, if we do that future sell minus one, you're now going to see that we could type in the price. If I said, look, I want to get out. If we go to 47.70, type it in. We could go data GTC and confirm and send. So what you should be seeing is, my gosh, I, I'm going to be using the monitor trade that monitors my orders and my positions. I'm going to be using that a lot. Correct. On the trade tab, pretty standard. Type in the symbol that you want, or if you said, I wanna know what symbols there are available and what the multiplier is, et cetera, click on the drop down, go to the futures tab, and there's your upfront list. And the main thing to remember is what is the fractional movement in what in, in how much it moves called tick size. And for every of that, every tick, what is the tick value? Okay. And we can see that. And what is the initial margin requirement? That's a great reference. Okay. The other thing is the market watch. Okay. Before we go to questions here, when you look at the market watch, if you have certain features that you like to look at, put them in here. Okay. Now, if you said, I do not, uh, now Mike says he, he liked to look at historically grains. Grains, right. If you said, I don't look at, let's say, grains anymore. How do I take one of these off? Simply click on it and then hit the backspace on your keyboard and press enter. And what it does is it just takes one of those off. There's really not that bad. Click on what, what you're looking at, click backspace to delete it, press enter. And, and that you, st you so you can take away or add new ones as you will. And the last one we actually talked about before questions is going to charts. And if you pull up charts, this is going to be something you're going to be looking a lot of, not only the technical analysis of the chart, but also some of the features of using the trade on the right-hand side, time in sales, or active trader. 
So these are some of the things that you're going to be using a lot. And if you said, James, I when I look at futures, I, I don't normally look at the daily chart. Just remember that if that's you, if it was, you could also change the time frame. We have some defaults, but you could also customize the time frame that you want. Guess what? It's about what you want. And I think as you saw this here today, you're think, thinking, wow, this thing's pretty robust, but it has some of those same features over and over again that I could use. And in a pretty short period of time, you could probably get pretty comfortable, okay? And that's what I found for myself. The first time I saw it, I was blown away by, this is so much better than what I was using. At least that's how I felt it for myself. And then when I started to learn Think or Swim back in what, 2005, I was like, wow, this is a lot better. So I think sometimes when we learn something for the first time, it's the first time. Get used to it. But the biggest thing is as you get used to it, practice, understand like we did here today, we did some practice trades. Go in here, don't be worried about making mistakes, just practice. It's paper money, get used to the functionality, how it works, how do you put the orders in, how do you change the orders, just make sure you, you're up to date on that. Now Mike, let's take the last five minutes or so, do we have any questions out there or anything that you want to bring up? Sure. We had uh, you got a lot of people excited about trading here on Thinkorswim desktop as well. Too, we get a lot of questions about when will their accounts be able to move over and be able to use this platform for our current uh, Street Smart Central clients at Schwab. Uh, we'll be rolling out those futures clients over to Thinkorswim in the next several weeks. You'll be getting email announcements when that will occur. But we're looking towards probably the end of the first quarter. There, we'll start rolling our customers out here to Thinkorswim swim using for futures as well too uh we also got some questions there to want to see maybe a little bit about the options on futures capabilities here on toss james we don't have those i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> no they're, they're like wait seriously okay hey, wait a minute so, hold on yeah exactly i'm sorry it's early so here's the deal <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to go to the trade tab okay and, and some of you are good. I couldn't even sneak it past you. You're like, no, I see that James isn't bringing it up, but I see it. Okay, so let us let me delete this order, okay? What we're gonna do is let's just kind of bring this up like you would probably see it, okay? And this is, so if you brought it up on your side, we go to the trade tab and let's say we came in and said, you know what? I was thinking about doing the micro gold. Okay, fine, there it is. Now, what you're gonna notice is this is the futures. But then down below, there's options on futures. And what you're now going to notice is there's the expiration uh, month. This is how many days there is to expiration. So there's only one day remaining, okay, on that contract. Now, if you said, well, James, I was thinking about going really down to the February expiration with 32 days left, okay? So if we clicked on that, what you're now going to see is we can now see the options for those. Now, what I do want to show you is if you're trading options on equities, we know that seeing volume is critical and open interest. Right. Well, what you're going to notice on the micros, the open interest for this expiration, there's zero. So that would not be the example. The goal is not to be the sole buyer and then wonder, who am I going to sell it to? So the investor might say, I'm not going to do that one. But if we went in and said, look, I'm going to trade the CL, can I go into, let's say, the CL contract, the crude oil, bring up, let's say, the March expiration, Mike, do we see some liquidity now? Uh, we see a little bit there. Yeah, it looks like we yeah. see some uh, liquidity there. So, Yeah. So now we see, when we look at open interest, open interest is the number of contracts that are open and on exercise. So now we could bring up things like I could buy a call, I could do a vertical, et cetera. So if I bring this up and I say, look, I really want to do like a, uh, and in this case, what I'll do is I'll come over here. Left hand side is the calls. The right hand side is the puts. We're going to go over here to the right hand side. We're going to right click on the bid, right click on the bid of that strike that you want to maybe buy or sell. In this case, we're going to sell the 73. If we come up to where it says sell, this is now where you're going to see a menu of what we could do. 
you're now going to see where it'll say single option. We're going to buy or sell the put. We're going to do vertical. Now, if we do the sell vertical, this would be really your classic short put vertical. Short put vertical is a cash secured put. But in this case, since we're buying a put below us, we call it a short put vertical. Now, it defaults to the narrowest strikes. If you say, ah, I wasn't thinking about the 72 and a half. I was thinking about the 71. We'll change it, okay? Selling the 73. How do we know we're selling the 73? Well, it's minus 10. Selling the 73. Plus 10, we're buying 10 contracts of the 71. And then there's the credit. Now, if you said, well, do you have to do 10? No, it's what you want. We're going to go ahead and actually click on the plus. If I click on the plus, we can say, look, I want one contract. Well, if I go down to, let's say, minus one, because we're selling a put vertical, okay, and it's going to be minus one, we're selling the higher strike, bullish, and the strike below us is we're buying downside protection. Now, by the way, if you trade options on equities, it's the same thing. So this was kind of nice. If you did options on equities, and then you said, hey, I want to maybe also see is the functionality different for the features, the answer is no, okay? But be made aware of you are trading options on futures, okay? Now, if I went confirm and send, you're now gonna see that also there is some information like what is the break even? What is the max profit or max loss? Cost of the trade? What is the buying power effect? And also it gives some kind of two lines in red that you always want to read to verify, do you understand maybe some of the risk associated with the trade? So Mike, hopefully the, the person that asked that question or persons is pleased. Yeah, it's there as well. And I know last year when I was teaching futures, we would not only trade futures, but also we would do occasionally some futures options. And a lot of people are interested in the capability of that. And it's right here. Um, and even I, I better, we, James, you can trade on, up yeah, the ahead. four leg spreads here on okay. Thinkorswim as well, too, where in Street Smart it was limited to two legs. So actually, okay. you have more advanced tools and strategies here on Toss than currently on Street Smart Central. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as you can tell, there's some options here that you can consider. Now, hopefully, back in 2005, when I saw this platform for myself, I, I couldn't believe, and I, I had used multiple platforms before, none of them what had the capability of the Thinkorswim platform. And hopefully, as you see this, you're like, wow, this is something that's very interesting. This is a software. It's you download the software. You also notice that there is no like web where it's you have to refresh the page, et cetera. This is streaming data, okay? And that's the other thing. A lot of people might use a web-based or something like that. Uh, this is constantly updating. It's a software platform. So I know we're out of time here, but Mike, anything you really want to say in closing here? Well, I just want to say that, James, I think you did a great job showing all the tools and features there that are available uh, currently on Street Smart Central, but on TOS as well, too, and a lot more features there that were available currently for our clients there as well, too. And I think you got a lot of people really excited here, really, to jump on and get ready to trade here on Thinkorswim. And I also want to call out here, this is just the first of several of these uh, webinars we will be doing in the next several weeks to get you comfortable with that transition from street smart platforms over to Think or Swim. And uh, James will be doing uh, another one next week at this time as well, too. We're going to highlight the Think or Swim web platform as well, too, for those clients that may not have access to a downloadable platform like Think or Swim Desktop there. We're going to show you some of those great tools and features that you could do on a web-based platform as well. And of course, if you want to see more of these Thinkorswim demos there, we actually have them on the Schwab.com uh, website as well. Too. If you go to the learning tab on Schwab.com, you'll see a list of several different uh, Thinkorswim demos there as well. And of course, definitely go to our YouTube channel here as well to see all the great content put out by education coaches such as James here, as well as the rest of them there as well too, to learn all kinds of great trading strategies, whether it's futures, options, equities there. There's just a slew of information there as well. So James, once again, I want to thank you for that great presentation as well too, and I look forward to having you on again next week. 
looking forward to it, Mike. And uh, I really want to let you know that uh, Mike and myself will do uh, the best to really explain some of the tools. Each time we'll kind of maybe uh, look more and more into your questions and try to incorporate that into our teaching. And so it's very important that you know that this is the place that you can feel comfortable and know that the tools are here for you, not only the current ones that you might be using, but also uh, other tools that you are not you are you are aware of as well. So, Mike, it's been a pleasure to be with you and all of you here this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today.